Hi, and welcome to this section of the Advanced Calculus 2 Tutor. And in this section of the class, we're going to switch gears yet again and start to begin to talk about a new topic entirely, and that's the topic of polar coordinates. So the next two or three sections are going to deal with polar representation of functions, and this is the introductory, uh, introductory part of that, dealing with polar coordinates. So in this class has sort of been a hodgepodge of things, and that's how Calculus 2 is when you get towards the, uh, toward the end of it. You start to talk about your trigonometric functions, your inverses, you start to talk about all of your, uh, your surface areas and your arc lengths and all that stuff sort of disconnected. And then you come into the topic of polar coordinates, polar equations, and specifically, the culmination of that in Calculus 2 is doing the integrals in polar coordinates. And sometimes that can trip people up because it's a new concept. It's not something you're used to thinking about too much. But I have to say that the, this polar stuff you know, all of this stuff is somewhat important if you're going to go on to, to engineering or physics or any kind of a, of a science-based career, okay? But polar coordinates, I really want you to learn this stuff, okay? Because having gone through engineering and gone on and done some things, really that is very powerful stuff. And some of the other topics in this class, you may or you may not ever use them in your whole life. Some of the topics on the techniques of integration by partial fractions, you, you may not use that. It just depends on if you happen to come up against a problem to need that. Polar representation and polar integration and all that stuff, that is used pretty much all the time by any branch of engineering that you go into. So this is really important stuff. So let's just dive right into it. What we're talking about now, we're not talking about any integrals, we're not talking about derivatives, we're not talking about anything other than in this section talking about what a polar coordinate is, okay? So remember that a Cartesian coordinate, or, or a Cartesian coordinate is the one that you've uh, learned about all your life, uh, you have two numbers, x and y, that define that. So if this is your, your, your graph, you know, that you've grown up uh, knowing all the time, it's the xy graph, right? And I have a point here, okay? And when you learned about this point, uh, you were taught that this point uh, can be represented by two numbers, x comma y. Okay, now you're very comfortable with this idea now because you've been doing it for so long. But when you were first introduced to this, this was a pretty far out concept, okay, that you would take a point, you'd put it on a graph, and that location of that point would be uh, the x coordinate, and it would, you'd put a comma here, and then you'd also put the y coordinate. And those are just numbers. It could be 3 comma 4, 2 comma... 5, negative 1, comma 2, whatever it is, two numbers to represent a point in a plane. And as you know, when you get into talking about three-dimensional functions and three-dimensional space, which is the real world we live in, when you get off to calculus 3 uh, next semester, you're going to have a third dimension there, so it would be x and y and z. But for now, everything we're talking about is only in a plane, okay, because that makes it easier. Okay, so here are our points. These are Cartesian points. Those are the ones you already know about. And you write equations, uh, equations in court, uh, uh, Cartesian uh, coordinate systems are just, they're very simply the same sort of thing. You have x and y, all right, on a graph. And then, you know, if you have, a, if you have some sort of function, you know, it would go up and come down or whatever it, whatever it does, some smooth continuous function, okay? And we say that y is equal to f of x. Now, this is all review here, okay? This, this uh, vertical direction here, y, that shapes the, what this graph actually looks like is a function of x. You take a value of x, you stick it in this function, you get back the value of y, okay? So we say here that x is the independent variable. And that's because that's the number you actually plug into the function, so it's independent. The dependent variable uh, is y because it's dependent on whatever value of x you have and also on, on the function that you have. 